Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, Church of New Destiny worldwide. We give God praise for all our lives. You are special to us. You may not be in the same room where we are. You may not be in the same building where we are, but we are in the center of the body of Christ. We are in his kingdom. Praise the Lord. And so therefore we are together. We are one and we are centered in him in Jesus mighty name. Amen. So I I greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen this morning. And so what has the Lord got for us this morning? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you, Jesus, to give me utterance, to come and express yourself through my tongue, through my heart, through my eyes and my ears. I pray that your will be done, even as the kingdom, Father God's will, is being done right now on earth in Jesus' name. Have your way. I cover myself. I cover your people with the blood of Jesus Christ. Help us to hear your voice alone and the voice of no other. We shall not hear the voice of a stranger this morning in the name of Jesus. So we silence every whisper of the enemy, every voice of the enemy. We silence right now and we decree that the voice of Jesus alone is what we'll hear in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so I want to um, ask you a question. What do you find yourself doing? When things go wrong, what do you find yourself doing? What are your habits? What are your patterns? What are our behaviors like? I have titled this, The Enemy Called Flesh, right? We are all flesh, praise the Lord. And what I wrote down here is that if we live by the flesh, we die by the flesh. <laughs> so what is flesh? I'm giving you my own personal description, okay? Flesh to me equals death. That's what flesh is to me. Flesh equals death, flesh equals sin. And the reason why I say that is because flesh will die. This flesh is not going to heaven. It's our spirit that is going into heaven. So our spirit will exit the flesh and the flesh is the house where the spirit has lived in for 80 years, 70 years, six, whatever, how many years God gives us on earth. The, the spirit will live in this house called flesh. And so your own home, where you live right now, we call it a house. Our flesh is the house where our spirit resides in. Now, when you have your house, does it not rain? Of course it rains. What do you do? You're protected. The rain will rain on us in life. Adversity will come, which the rain of adversity will come. The rain of pain will come. The rain of problems will come, but we are housed. We're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. The only thing is that your house, does your house tell you what to do? Does your house tell you what to do? Yeah. But our flesh tells us what to do. Majority of us will listen to the flesh more than the spirit. And so what am I trying to say? The flesh is a slave to sin. Our flesh is a slave to sin. Sin equals flesh. Flesh equals sin. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so we're going to go into Romans chapter 6. Where the Bible says that we're dead to sin and we're alive to God. Okay? And so... Paul the Apostle is talking about sin and grace. He's saying in Romans chapter 6, what shall we say then? My brethren, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Some people say we're in the time of grace. All right, fine, but shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue to say it's all right to keep fornicating? It's all right to keep lying? It's all right to keep cheating? It's all right to keep doing all those bad things? 
And so Paul puts himself in, 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 in a position. And he's saying, certainly not. No, 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 no. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Not at all. No. We should not be doing that. We must not keep sinning. And my message to you this morning is, we must not keep sin sinning. We have an enemy called flesh. We must be delivered from the flesh in the name of Jesus Christ. We need deliverance from the things of the flesh. And let me tell you, sin is gluttony. We go to the fridge, we eat and we eat and we eat and we eat and we can see that it's wrong because it's having a negative effect on our flesh. God needs us to be healthy, to be wealthy and to be wise. So we need to make the right choices, but sin will not allow us. Flesh will not allow us to do that. What is flesh? Flesh equals death. See, because when we make the wrong choices, the soul that sins shall die. Sin is not only pornography. Sin is not only cheating and adultery. No. Sin is even making the wrong choices when we know what the right choice should be. Sin is not listening. Sin is disobeying. And so, Apostle Paul is saying, no. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? When Christ died, we died with him. We died to sin. We were grafted in him. We died to sin. Why then should we continue to live longer in sin? We must exit sin. We must divorce sin. Listen, sin is that old law. Sin, sin is, is, is that flesh. If we're married to the flesh, we need to divorce the flesh, exit the flesh, be delivered from the flesh and no longer live in the flesh. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death, we were baptized into his death. The day you decided that you're going to give your life to Jesus, that was the day of your baptism, spiritually. You were baptized, that was the day you got born again. And so that was why we said we are born again, we are reborn through the death of Christ into a new life. And therefore, those old things have passed away. Our old way of living, our old way of speaking, our old way of eating, our old way of partying, our old way of doing those things of the flesh. Flesh is our enemy. You must treat the flesh as an enemy. And then you will be victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. Through the power of the word, we will deal with the flesh in Jesus' mighty name. And so, therefore, we were buried with Jesus through baptism into death. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, Jesus is saying we should walk in the newness of life. A lot of the body of Christ, right now we're in the middle of praying for the body of Christ because a lot of us are not walking in the newness of the life that we have professed. We confess Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, but we must walk in the newness of that life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Listen, we died to the flesh and we resurrected again into the life of Jesus. So we must live in this newness of life. No longer should Christians be dressing like unbelievers. No. We must not be yoked together like unbelievers. You know, the other day I saw a wedding gown and it was so beautiful because the lady covered her chest. And I thought, oh, this is unusual in this age. She looked absolutely gorgeous. She looked classy. She was respectable. Because today, I don't know the difference. And I'm sorry to say it this way. Please forgive me if I've offended anybody. Today, Majority of the time, I don't know the difference between the prostitute and the Christian in their dressing. I don't know. I don't know. Because when I say a prostitute, I know what they look like. And I'm not judging them because Jesus loves them. Do you understand what I mean? But we must walk in the newness of the life that we've professed. We died with Christ. We're resurrected with him. 
and we are redeemed. I see the heart of Jesus is bleeding, bleeding for the body. Listen, the world will be the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so the Apostle Paul is saying in verse 6 of Romans 6, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. Listen, when Jesus died and he was crucified and we gave our lives to Christ, that day our old man was crucified with him. We died. You and I died. Have you given your life to our Lord Jesus Christ? Have you confessed him as your Lord and personal Savior? That day, your flesh died. You died. Praise the Lord. We were crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. But today, I don't know what's going on. There's a lot of slavery to sin. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I see parts of the body bound. I want you to imagine a physical body right now and imagine the body of Christ like that. Some part of the body is bound, the hands are bound, the eyes are blind, the ears are deaf. And it's only because of the flesh. We glorify and gratify the flesh. Masturbation is gratifying the flesh. It is a sin of the flesh. Listen, if you struggle with that, that doesn't mean that, oh, you're a sinner, you're going to hell. No, what Christ is saying is, I'm here to come and help you now. I want to deliver you. I want to deliver you from that. I want to deliver you from addictions. I want to deliver you from lying. I want to deliver. He wants to deliver us. That's why Paul is saying this thing, all right, and making us recognize that we are flesh. You know the old law in the Old Testament, they lived by the law. And because of the law, you're able to recognize sin. Do not do this. Do not do that. Do not commit adultery. Do not lie. Do not steal. Do not do this. Because of those laws, we're able to recognize what sin is. But now we are in Christ. We're no longer under that law. We're walking in the freedom of the spirit. And that's why Paul the Apostle is saying, okay, you're free now. You're no longer under that legality. But shall we continue to sin because of that? No, no, no. No, no, no. Certainly not. We're not meant to continue in sin and say, oh, that grace may abound. And the body of Christ in recent years is saying, no, oh, it's the season of grace. So we should continue to sin. No, the Apostle Paul is saying, no, the Bible is saying, no, no, certainly not. It's, it, the Bible disagrees with anybody. It's not biblical. To say, oh, you know, God is not wicked, you know. God is so kind. Absolutely. God is not wicked. God is kind. But God has rules. God has boundaries. God has stated what he, he delights him. And if we want to live with him in eternity, we have to walk under his, his spirit in submission and humility and be willing to be delivered from the afflictions of our flesh. And that's why I said the flesh is your enemy. The flesh is my enemy. Anything that I overdo, listen, I went out um, to lunch with my sister and the other day, let me tell you, I'll be honest with you, because seeing a pastor, you think, oh, they're perfect. No, I'm not one of those. No, I'm just like anyone else, right? So we went out, we came out of the restaurant and I saw this man, honestly, God, please forgive me. I'm just using it as an example. The shape of his head was funny, right? So in my mind, straight away, I thought, hmm, what a funny shaped head, you know. And you see, you see this old flesh likes to feel good with itself, you know. Straight away, the flesh just talked. Oh, the shape was, and I said to my sister, ah. I said, Lord, forgive me. How did I think like that? You love that man. You love the shape of his head. In fact, when you meet him, you'll be rubbing his head without any hair. After all, we came with no hair. Do you see babies with long hair? on earth, no, the hair grows. And so how dare I judge somebody else? That's what I'm trying to say. We think we're, we're so good, you know, we think we're so this and that. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me not to be critical. Help me not to be judgmental of somebody. 
He didn't hurt me. He doesn't know me. I don't know him. And so we must check ourselves. See, we must walk in the newness of life. Rethink, rethink your thinking. Look at yourself. Take the log out of your own eyes. Do you understand? Jesus is saying, and, and, and so let's continue, that we shall no longer be slaves to sin. The body of sin must be, must be done away with. A believer, a woman in the church must not be sleeping with another man if you're not married to that man. That is sin. And that is, you will not enter the kingdom of God. I'm telling you the truth. Honestly, it's paining me right now to be saying what I'm saying, but I've got to speak the truth. So that when we get to the gates of heaven, don't allow no married man to date you. Tell him, get out of my door. Get out of my way. Show him off. And the same, if you're a married man and one woman is fancying you, you think it only happens in the world, it happens in the church. It happens in the choir. <laughs> it happens amongst leaders and congregation, unfortunately. And I'm speaking to all of us, all of us, Congregation, leadership, choir leader, don't fall into temptation. Do away with the body of sin. For you have died with Christ and you have resurrected with him. In Christ in us, the hope of glory. I rebuke the flesh this morning in the name of Jesus. And that's why the flesh is rebellious. The flesh is rebellious. It doesn't want to hear truth. Have you seen when you speak truth to some people, they will gaslight you. It's you, it's you, it's what you've done. Did you see Adam? Let's go back to Genesis. <laughs> With Adam and Eve, all of us know that story. When God instructed them not to eat of the fruit of that particular tree, what did they do? They didn't listen, they disobeyed. And when God came in the garden, is God not loving and kind? He still came to meet with them. He still came down to, this is a good, good father. Because he, he loves them. And he came down in the midst of that garden. But what had happened to Adam and Eve? They were hiding. Why? Because of the flesh. The flesh got the better of them. They fell into sin. That's what the flesh does. The serpent will bite you if you don't live in the newness of life. The serpent beat them. They were deceived. They were lied to. Somebody can sweet talk you to hell and you will think they're the nicest person on earth. We have to watch and pray. And when God said, what has happened? here? What's happened here? He asked Adam. Because Adam must be a responsible man. What did he say? It's the wife that you gave me. <laughs> he pointed the finger. How many of us are like that? That Adamic nature, that flesh in us will point quickly at somebody else. It's my sister. It's 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 him. It's her. It's we don't look inwardly. And really, it was Eve that caused Adam to sin. But Adam was irresponsible. Adam fell. If somebody comes and says, "Take this apple and eat," and God says, "No," no means no. When God states out His laws. Thou shalt not sin, thou shalt not fornicate, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not be jealous, thou shalt not be envious, thou shalt not do this and that. He means what he says. I'm sick of preaching offerings. Men and women of God, forget about the offering and preach the true word of God. Because God says, I will judge you on that last day if you don't let people know the truth. Because we've turned ourselves into businessmen. Let the businessman do his business. And let us do the business of God. The word of God. To walk in, in spirit and in truth. To walk in the newness of life. Many students at university are failing. They're falling. From when our children are young. Our girls, we ought to start teaching them how to say no to a man. How to sit properly. How when a man comes and says, I love you. How do you understand what that even means? 
So we have to love them from when the children to be content in that love rather than looking for love from outside. So that they will not eat that Adamic apple. So that they will not fall into sin. So that they will not be walking in the flesh. A lot of children don't know how to dress because parents are not dressing well themselves. If we don't speak right, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. What the children hear in their homes is what they will say. Timmy can never come and meet me and say, I think this and that. It will, it's absolutely, <laughs> I don't know what will happen that day. God forbid it. We must maintain that standard in the family. We must stand. Let's not lead our children to hell because we love them. We over pamper them. We don't want to tell them the truth and we don't want any outsider to even tell them the truth. We don't want to hear that. Listen, God punished Adam because of that. Until today, we're suffering from that sin. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. And so that is what the Apostle Paul is saying. In Romans chapter 6, verse 8. Now, if we died with Christ, if you really say that you're dead in Christ, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. We must die to sin. We must die to the deeds of the flesh. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. We must live our lives to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We must live our lives to God. In the church, let us live our lives to God. In the choir, let us live our lives to God. When we're competitive, we're walking in the flesh. When we're jealous, we're walking in the flesh. When we're lying, we're walking in the flesh. When we're manipulative, we're walking in the flesh. The flesh is our enemy. This old flesh must die. Die. You have to kill it. <laughs> we were married to the flesh. But now we're divorced from the flesh and we have newness of life. We have a new husband. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I have a ring on my finger. It's a physical ring. But listen. You have the ring of Christ on your finger. You're, you're bound to Christ. You are married to Christ. You are, you are grafted into Christ now. So you are one with Christ. But if we're living in the flesh, we're divorcing ourselves from Christ. We're separating ourselves from Christ. Whatever rules the bridegroom will rule the bride. And so the Bible says here, likewise, you also, that's you and me, you, Lade, also. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Listen, I didn't finish reading verse 9, and I want that to minister to you. Let me read it again. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Death no longer has dominion over him. I want you to say that right now. And say, death no longer has dominion over me. Death no longer has dominion over me. Death no longer has dominion over me. And so if you get angry, no, stop getting angry. Death no longer has dominion over you and me. If you're getting flustered easily, no. Death no longer has dominion over me, over you. In the name of Jesus. Because this flesh is something else. And so in verse 11, it says, likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Look, you must be alive to God in Christ Jesus. Listen, I must be alive to God in Christ Jesus. I am alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. So the Bible is saying, therefore, in verse 12, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Where does sin reign? Where does it reign? In the flesh. <laughs> so you see, death equals flesh, flesh equals sin. Did you see where I'm coming from? 
do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts listen flesh is lost for don't let sin control your life that is what the bible is saying don't let it reign don't let it rule because if if the flesh if sin is reigning then christ is not reigning yet we say that christ is the lord of our lives who is the lord of our lives really let's ask ourselves that question if you're bound to some kind of addiction that addiction is ruling our lives it could be as simple as the littlest lie it could be as simple as gluttony it could be as simple as that but it gets bigger into pride into haughtiness into adultery into fornication into the lust of the eye the lust of the flesh and the pride of life this is what is killing humanity today the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life the lust of the eyes what we see what we see we want to people to see us in a certain way we want people to to believe us to to worship us to that's why people want to become stars why do i want to become a star i'm already a star Christ in me, the hope of glory. You're already a star. I don't need to become one. Christ made me one when he died and I resurrected with him. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is a star. He is a morning star, the bright morning star. And so if Christ is a star and I'm engrafted in him, then you are a star. Why does any man need to make me a star then? Why do I need to gratify my flesh with handbags, with cars? With, I'm not saying don't look after yourself. It's nice when I see somebody looking lovely. That's great. Let's look after ourselves. There's no problem with that. It's when it lords over us, when it's reigning in our flesh, when it's ruling us, when we can't do without something. Some men can't do without many women or cheating. Some women can't do without many men or cheating. Some people can't do without being, being fraudulent. I know a country that I don't want to mention. The whole nation is corrupt. I know corruption goes everywhere. It's everywhere. But the level of corruption is at every level. <laughs> Even to your bank account, your money can disappear anytime. <laughs> and you know, they say, <laughs> you just don't know. You'll be struggling to even get your money out if you haven't been using it for a long time. That's the level. And there are Christians at every level. I'm not saying it's the Christians that are still in the money, but if you're a Christian, because the whole nation is corrupt, the flesh is ruling and reigning and lording it over people, that even the Christian will be tempted to accept a bribe. The Christian will be tempted to cheat. The Christian will be tempted to fornicate because it's happening everywhere. The Christian will be tempted to dress like, like an unbeliever, like a tart, like a prostitute. The Christian will be tempted to watch pornography, even on, on, the, on the social media now. You don't need to go into any shop to buy a special video. It's all in your face. It's on social media. Some people will take a photo and you like, watch. Some things you just run away from. Sometimes you're looking for something. That's why I feel sorry for the children today. Sometimes maybe they're just searching for something. Another thing will just flag up. Please help our children, please. Help them, warn them. Teach them, show them what to avoid and what not to, you know, what, once you come up and something flags up, quickly run away from it because this is what kills. This is what destroys. We must teach them to have the fear of the Lord for the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. These days now, we don't have people who can tell us truth. You will be so hated. In fact, you'll cry. If you if you love to speak truth, people will hate you. People will talk about you. But listen, keep speaking truth because heaven will vindicate you. Heaven will rejoice over you. Heaven will know that you're not a hypocrite. You're not a Pharisee. You're not a Sadducee who is religious and under legalism and just wants to please, please man and not please God. And so the Bible is saying to us today, therefore, do not allow sin to reign to control to rule over you here on earth in your mortal body where is sin i want you to pinch yourself a little bit not too tight just give it that that flesh a little pinch there yeah yeah that's where sin resides <laughs> sin this flesh is controlling i'm telling you 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 begin to say i want to fast tomorrow this flesh 
has its own voice. It's got its own character. It's an entity on its own. The flesh speaks. And you see, before you enter a fast, speak to the flesh. Tell that flesh, I'm going to enter into a two, three week fast and you will keep quiet now. You will not control me in the name of Jesus Christ. I put you under the mark of the blood of Jesus. You will not be hungry. You will not torment me in Jesus' name. And you will see that the flesh will be quiet. That's why we fast to break that flesh. We fast to submit our will to God. We fast so that we can be humbled, so that the name of Jesus will be glorified even in our flesh. Even in our flesh. That's a prayer that comes to my heart many times. I pray for the young ones that they will, the Lord will enable them to make the right decisions. Listen, the flesh can make you marry the wrong person. The flesh. Somebody is looking handsome, gorgeous, wonderful. And you think who oh, did the best thing since sliced bread and everybody's looking at them like, Ooh, <laughs> it's just a model, you know, until you start living with that model and they begin to manifest their flesh where you see who they really are. But what led us to that would be that we just looked at the flesh. The lust of the eyes is what made us look at them like that. The lust of the flesh and the pride of life. But if the spirit were to choose, when I wrote my list, there's some things that were missing when my husband came. But God said, he's a perfect one for you. And I'm sure with him too. I'm not perfect. He's not perfect. But Christ comes and he perfects everything that concerns us. The Lord will perfect everything that concerns you. What am I saying to you today? You are precious. I'm not here to call you a sinner at all. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is we must continue to live in the newness of the life in Christ Jesus. We must continue to grow. We must continue to seek the Lord in every decision. We must continue to be pleasing unto God. We must continue to want to please him. We must continue in that newness of life. Listen, we must continue to not allow sin to reign in our mortal body. Because when sin is reigning, is when we let our guard down. When sin is reigning in our flesh, is when we, look, nobody is perfect. Just because somebody is divorced doesn't mean that the one that is married is better. No. There we all stand by the grace of God. It's by the grace of Almighty God. Children make mistakes. We keep loving. God loves each one of us. And he's helping us. And what God is saying is, I want to deliver you from the flesh. I want to deliver you from the bondage of sin. I want to deliver you from being hasty. I remember many years ago, many, many years ago, I was still young in the Lord. And I wanted to make a hasty decision. I was in such a hurry. Oh, Lord, you know, it's like I want to help God himself. And when God spoke to me, I was like, oh, I was so humbled. He said, my people never move in haste. I thought, oh, whew. you know, God is so wonderful. He won't bring a cane, but he'll give you a word that will sit you down. When my dad was alive, my dad would talk to me. He, he, I can remember my dad actually smacking me once in my life. That's all I can remember. But he would talk to you, and I hated that talking. I would rather he even smacks me so that I get there and go. He'll sit me down, and he'll be asking me questions. And then I'm so embarrassed. I'm so like let this man just leave me alone in my heart i'm just thinking i just need to get out of here now you know i don't want to hear anything anymore but those words lasted and they continue to live in me the word of god when we get the word of god in our hearts it will be a rod to the point where when i left home that his word was his voice was still ringing in my ears And he will come to us. He, I mean, he came to me. I can't remember the first time I used eyebrow pencil. I was like, wow, I want to use eyebrow pencil, you know. It's been an ambition since I was like 14. And now I'm turning 16 and I'm thinking eyebrow pencil, eyebrow pencil. So I put the eyebrow pencil on and I was so bold to walk around the house. My dad came after me. He came after me and he said, so what? You know, are you wearing? I said, I brought this. Go and clean it now. 
I don't want you dating those boys out there. He will tell you, I don't want you dating this person. In fact, the people, the tribe of people that my dad said, don't marry. Do you know? I'm glad I, that I didn't even go near there. That tribe is serious. You need to be really a warfare. You've got to be in warfare to marry into such clan. Some of you may not understand what I'm talking about. Some tribes are evil. If you get in there, you better be strong in the Lord. Because they'll kill you right there. They'll destroy your marriage. They'll destroy your home. They'll destroy you. If your husband should die that marriage, they'll pack you out of the house. You will be homeless. That's some good advice. That we must give our children. Start them from where they're little. Your nephew, your niece. Do it, do it. Do it. Maybe their dad is not born again, but you are. You are in the family. You are the priest right now. Sneak it in. And don't be ashamed. If the child goes to their dad and says, auntie said that, that's all right. You know, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm just telling them what's right. Praise the Lord. So we must not let sin reign in our mortal bodies. So when I traveled abroad and these boys now started chasing, you know, when you're on your own is when the test of time comes. And the guy came with me and my sister, wanted to sleep over. I thought, mm? my sister came to me and said, mm, mm, mm. this guy is thinking he's going to sleep over. Nobody's asking him to sleep here. We're going to drive him out because I could hear the voice of my dad. <laughs> yeah. All I could see was something else. I don't want to get pregnant or anything like that. I'm sorry to say. He put that fear in us. And so we said to the guy, there's no room here tonight. You've got to go home. He looked at us like shockers. You have to leave. You never came back after that. Goodbye to bad thing. Teach your children to say goodbye to bad things. Goodbye. You know men are funny. If it's easy to pluck the apple on the tree, they'll pluck it, eat it, spill out the seed and go. It's the one that's not easy to catch that they'll bring a ladder to climb. They will labor over that one. And so when we teach our girls, don't know why I'm saying this because I'm digressing a little bit. But when we teach our girls, even and our boys, to make the right choices, don't be easy. Don't be cheap to get. Yeah. Some of us are where we are today because we played it easy. We mustn't. No. Don't give the devil any room. What's yours will not pass you by. Listen, what is yours will not pass you by. Your blessing will not walk past you. Your blessing will locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Foundations are being rebuilt right now in Christ. Jesus is rebuilding broken foundations. Yes, 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 yes. And we who fell, we will rise again in Jesus' name. Listen, that's why I said I'm not here to point any finger. Because anybody, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry to digress there, but the Spirit just put that in my heart. Do not let sin control your life. Let's continue. And then the Bible says, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Oh, my Father. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God, your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Hallelujah. So the Bible is saying, don't offer parts of your body or any part of yourself to serve sin. Can you see how the enemy possesses the flesh through the eyes? The eye gateway, the flesh, pride. This is what the enemy is doing today and he's gaining ground and we must not give him that ground to gain. That's why we pray and we claim back our children. We claim back the land. We claim back our nation. We claim back for the church. The church has risen now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We will not allow sin to control our lives. We will not offer parts of our body or any part of ourselves to serve sin. They're weapons. They're being used as weapons of evil. You could see somebody, they're marked out for the devil. You can see it right there. Because some people have sold their souls to the devil. They've given the member of their body to the devil. So the devil is their Lord. Jesus is Lord of our lives. How can we be looking like them? I don't want a tattoo on my body. Thank you very much. 
let's go there. Because on that last day, I'll put my hands up that, Lord, I did what you sent me to do. No child of God must have a tattoo. I, I lectured my son on it because around him, tattoo language is there. It's their world. It's a new world. They're born into it. Have you seen a child typing with two hands like that on a tiny little phone? You're wondering how do they do that? They're born into it. We're born into sin. We're born into the flesh. We're born into unrighteousness, but we must not allow it to reign in our bodies. We must not give up. I went to research this tattoo thing. I had to. I said, what is it, Lord, about this thing? Marking the body. And it's painful, apparently. And people still go through that pain. It's like bloodletting. And when I read the description of the tiny little pins that punch into your body, tiny, 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 and they wipe, why do they wipe something off? They're wiping off the blood. And, and, and from the research I, I did, when you walk into where they do the tattoo, the, the, the guy said there's a back room somewhere where there's a, a skull in there. I don't know. I don't want to go deeper. Who are they worshipping? What are they doing there? Why is it all dark in there? Why can't there be light? Why is it all dark in there? Why is it that all the images are demonic? And then a child of God will carry themselves and walk into that place and let somebody do the same thing that they do to the, for the devil to do it on their, their skin, their body. Listen. The enemy is a deceiver. The Bible says, do not offer the parts of your body or any part of yourself to serve sin as things to be used in doing evil, instruments, weapons of evil, of unrighteousness. But instead, offer yourselves to God as a people who have died and now live. So I said to my son, I don't want to see one tattoo on you. I don't care how trendy, how wonderful, how holy it looks. Because some people will say, oh, I did a cross. That's a deception of the enemy. See, that's how the enemy is. Oh, I did a cross. I did this. I wrote the name of Jesus. Did Jesus ask you to write on your flesh? Write it on your heart. Don't write on your flesh. Write it on your heart. Put that cross in your heart. It's from the heart. See? Because some of us, we, we have not tattooed the name of Jesus on our hearts, but we want to tattoo it on our body. It's from the heart. Christ looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. Jesus will look at our heart every single day. It's, an, it's his name tattooed on our hearts it is the blood of jesus that should be on our heart and that blood of jesus will write on our heart the name of jesus we don't need any other blood to be shed we don't need any other thing to be done and so our prayer is that we'll offer ourselves unto god as people who have died and now live in christ in the newness of life and so the Bible says in verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you're not under law, but under grace. Listen, sin shall not have dominion over you. I want you to confess it to yourself and say it now. Sin shall not have dominion over Ladi. Sin shall not have dominion over me. Sin shall not have dominion over my children. Sin shall not have dominion over my household. Sin, this is a great prayer. Sin shall not have dominion over my marriage. Sin shall not have dominion over my destiny, over my children, over my home, over my life. Sin shall not have dominion over me, Lade. Sin, you shall not have dominion over me. Sin shall not have dominion over my flesh. Sin shall not have dominion in my home. In my nephew, in my niece, in my family, sin shall not have dominion. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's a prayer that we must pray every week. Because the tendency, and that's why we pray the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Help us not to fall into temptation. Adam and Eve fell. And Christ came and resurrected us from that fall. Shall we continue to sin? That's what Paul is saying in verse 15. So what then? You see, because when we were in the flesh, we did not bear fruit to God. We were fruitless. 
But now that we're in Christ, we must be fruitful. We must be bearing fruit to God. In the old life, we bore fruit unto death. The fruit that we were bearing was not bearing any fruit that brings life. It was bearing fruit unto death. Anybody who is in the flesh will bear fruit unto death. Because what the law of the old will do is, okay, I'm not stealing, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, so I'm now holy, now I'm now perfect. No. Christ is saying we've been delivered from that law. And so we must walk in the newness of life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I think it's Romans 7 that says that we've been delivered from the law. Romans 7, 6. Let me see if I'm correct. Romans 7, 6. But now we, yeah, but now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by. We were held by our old life of sin. We were in bondage to sin. Now we have been delivered so that we shall serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Can you see not in the oldness of the letter. We've been delivered from the dominion of sin into the freedom of righteousness in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so that old law does not, does not justify us. It does not sanctify us. The law of Christ sanctifies us. The law of Christ has justified us. That old law does not take us deeper. In those days, I just went to church. I was a church goer. Listen, I wasn't born again, but I went to church. I wasn't saved. I wasn't sanctified. I was not. I was not walking in any deep relationship with God. I just knew how to pray. I just prayed every day. Thank you for God's mercy and his grace. I was still bound in sin. I was still bound in the flesh. But coming to Christ set me free. I'm no longer a captive. You're no longer captive to flesh, to sin, to the old way, to the old law. Now we have been set free in Christ Jesus and we're going to serve him in the newness of life in Jesus' name. We will serve him under this newness of the spirit because in the newness of the spirit, we bear fruit. And so how do we serve him in that newness of the spirit? We must be slaves to righteousness. And so, you know, it's a whole new sermon, what God is saying. So what Paul, the apostle is saying that, do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are the, that one slaves whom you obey. If you're addicted to drink, you are, you are a slave to drink. You are a slave to drink. If you're addicted to anything, we are slaves to whatever that thing is. And that's why we can't point to anybody because there's something that each one of us must look in what to change. So we need to reflect. Self-reflection is good, is good, is healthy. And it moves us forward in Jesus' mighty name. Let us obey Jesus from the heart. Let us obey him from our hearts because we have been set free from sin. We're no longer slaves. We're children of God. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Another day I will preach on that message, what I don't find, what I don't want to do. That's what Paul the Apostle was saying, is what I find myself doing. Is there something that you're doing that you don't want to do? That's the sin of the flesh. That's a, you know, all of us have one thing or the other. Some people are obsessed with their windows and their doors at home. Yeah, simple things. Some people, yeah, you want to shut that window 10 times, you want to open it 10 times, you want to check on it 14 times. It's called OCD. <laughs> Some people might say, oh, no, you know, I just went to shut the window. Little things can hold us bound. Fear. We're scared of sleeping here or going there or, or, you know, turning off the light at night. We have to be set free. That's bondage. Just little things like that. And then in the body of Christ, let's walk together in the newness of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's keep moving forward. We must not let sin control our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. The word of God will sanctify us in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. Amen. Let us pray. I'm just going to stop here because it's a, that's a lot. It's a package. It's full. I'll be here till tomorrow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But my simple encouragement to us all, because I must encourage myself as I encourage you. We are all children of God. Let us walk in the newness of life. Let's live that old life of sin. That's why some of us live old friends, because they'll cause us to sin. They'll cause us to fall. Some people carry spirits that are hefty, wrong spirits, deceitful spirits, lying spirits. So you can imagine if you've got 15 friends from of old that are not in Christ. I'm not saying everybody not in Christ is bad, no. But we all carry different things, right? And they're all around us every day. That's how children change. They change when they get to school. Why? Because they're surrounded by different spirits with different opinions. And if the majority are carrying the wrong spirit, listen, it will be the grace of God for your child to come home and not carry that spirit with them. And that's why when they come home, lay hands on your children and break off anything that is not of God. Break it off of their lives. Because spirits attach. They're looking for a home. They jump on people's shoulders. They follow those children home. So the children will start questioning, am I this or am I that? What am I? Why? Because of the voice of the enemy. They knew who they were before they left home. How come now you're not confused? We're buying the spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. That's why we must allow children to speak. Ask them, how was your day? Just ask, how was your day? Would you, would you, do you have any friends? You know, just let them speak so that then you can guide them, advise them and pray with them. Praise the Lord. And these little ones will do wonders for God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this morning and we say, Lord Jesus, come and help us to put the flesh down. Flesh, we speak to you this morning and we rebuke all your negative activities. We bind you from controlling us. You are meant to be in submission to the will of Jesus Christ. And we right now, we subdue you. I want you to speak to your flesh this morning and say, flesh, I subdue you. I subdue you. I put you into subjection under the blood of Jesus. I command you to obey the word of God in the name of Jesus. You will not rebel. You will not rebel against the will of God. You will not rebel against the word of God. My flesh, you will not rebel. You will fall into alignment with the will of God in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over my flesh. I want you to right now pray. Say, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over my flesh. I plead the blood of Jesus over my flesh. Flesh, you will not reign. You will not rule over me. Jesus is the Lord of my flesh, the Lord of my life, the reigning king in my heart. If I've taken a tattoo on my body, Lord, I repent. In the name of Jesus, I didn't know what I was doing. Please forgive me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the flesh will not rule my spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind every witchcraft that has been placed upon me for the flesh to eat me up, for the flesh to reign in me, for the flesh to make me die. In the name of Jesus, your flesh will not rule over me. I break the sin of the flesh. I bind the sin of the flesh. I bind the lust of the eyes. I bind the lust of the eyes. I bind the lust of the eyes. I bind the lust of the flesh. I bind the lust of the flesh in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind it. I bind pride in my heart. I bind pride. I bind pride right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I bind the lust of the flesh in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over my members, over my flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you right now to begin to plead the blood of Jesus over your eyes, over your ears, over your flesh right now. Every organ in your body right now in the name of Jesus. Satan wants to attach itself to some area of your body. You say no right now in the name of Jesus. I say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I say no to the devil. I say no to the devil. You will not be Lord over my flesh in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, come and rule over my flesh. I plead the blood of Jesus over my flesh, over my eyes, over each one of my organs, over my feet right now, over my hands, over my ears. I plead the blood of Jesus right now over every part of my body, every strand of my hair. I plead the blood of Jesus over my heart in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not fall. I will not fall in the name of Jesus, the flesh will not make me fall. 
the lost of the eyes i bind right now that lost get out your foul spirit of lost in the eyes get out of my body get out of my eyes get out of my eyes get out lost get out of my eyes in the name of jesus get out get out of my eyes your spirit of lost get out of my eyes in the mighty name of jesus i want you to plead the blood of jesus right now over your eyes in the name of jesus christ none of us will covet what anybody has none of us will be envious none of us will be jealous from what we see father will plead the blood of jesus over the eye gate right now we plead the blood of jesus over our eyes right now in the name of jesus christ father we thank you oh we give you praise we soak ourselves i want you to soak yourself right now say father i soak myself from the top of my head to the soles of my feet with the blood of jesus satan I'm no longer yoked with you. I am not yoked with you. I break every yoke of the past. I break it. Any attachment to my past, I break it. Break it. Break that attachment to your past. Yeah. Say, I break every attachment to my past. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I break it. I break it. I break it now. In the name of Jesus. Some of us is the attachment of the past. Past has not left us. We command that past to die. We command that past to die. Past, die in my memory right now. I don't want to remember that old life anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. I'm in a newness of life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I don't want to remember the past. I cast the past. I cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. Past will not haunt me. The past will not haunt me. The past will not judge me. The past will not make me feel guilty. The past is the past. I put the past behind right now in the name of Jesus. Nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. Leave the past behind in the name of Jesus. I leave it behind. I leave you past behind. I divorce you past. I divorce you. I divorce you. I divorce you. I separate myself from you in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ we pray amen 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 some of our trouble is the past it's causing trouble it's causing trouble and so we we will rebuild that trouble today in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you lord oh jesus we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise we give you praise thank you jesus thank you jesus you will feel free you will feel free you will feel free in the name of jesus you will feel free because your past is gone it's buried it's been buried with jesus a long time ago it will not haunt you it will not come back at you it will not judge you it will not follow you it will not even attach to you in jesus mighty name you will not even remember some things i say the lord wipe out every pain of your past I pray that the Lord will wipe out every pain of your past in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes, every rejection of your childhood, let it be wiped out right now. Some of you have been rejected as children and you're carrying that past with you. We reject it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Leave that past behind. Leave that child. That child is free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That child is free. Somebody called you fat and ugly yeah somebody called you a name that you didn't like as a child yeah lose that child right now in the name of jesus i command healing upon that child right now in jesus mighty name you felt insecure as a child insecurity of the past go that insecurity will not be in your present time right now because you are secure in christ listen you are secure in christ because you're the righteousness of god in christ jesus there's no reason why you should have low self-esteem because you, the newness of life has released you and brought you into freedom so we, we bury that past right now bury your past say jesus i bury my past i release my past to you you release it right now speak to jesus speak to jesus he wants to hear your voice say jesus i release my past to you i bury my past i release my past to you i give my past to you i don't want to remember my past anymore i give my past to you yeah yeah somebody did this to me my dad my mom my sister my brother anything yeah somebody auntie uncle whatever it is that abuse is over 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 we bury that past in the name of jesus christ thank you lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. That abuse is dead right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For those listening to us online, we bless the Lord for your lives. Perhaps God has spoken to you or ministered to you. I want you to just glorify his name, give him praise, thank him. You're no longer that old. You're no longer a slave to sin. You're a child of God. And so if you are listening to me and you're thinking, I would like to be free. Well, freedom comes through Christ, to, through submission to Jesus Christ. If you'd like to submit your will, your life to Jesus, and you want him to reign in your life, in your mortal body, will you pray this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, 
I come to you today and I give my heart to you. I, I ask you to be the Lord of my life, the Lord of my life, the Lord of my life, the Lord of my, of my flesh. I don't want to remember the past anymore. Jesus, deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me from the pain of my past, from the evil of my past, from the judgment of my past, from the guilt of my past. Jesus, deliver me. Today, I repent. I ask you, Jesus, please forgive me for all the errors, all the mistakes, everything that I've done, all the sins that I've committed. I say I'm sorry. I surrender myself to you. I repent of my ways. I repent of my past. I repent of all the things I've done. I ask you for mercy, Jesus. Forgive me. I ask in Jesus' name. And from today, be the Lord of my life forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I cover you with the blood of Jesus wherever you are. The Lord loves you. The Lord cares about you. This message is not to judge you. It's just to love you to do more. To walk further. To go deeper. To love Jesus more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to continue to shine upon you and give you everlasting peace. Everlasting peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening and God richly bless you. Amen.